Saturday night. Uh, what can you tell us? My brother was in town, so I went to eat with him, uh, and then I stayed downtown and hung out with some uh, older couple, Tyler Clement's parents. I actually hung out with them and my girlfriend and John McHugh and his girlfriend, so it was good. I didn't really do much, just kind of hung out and went, <laughs> went home, went to bed. Yeah, anybody, like that... anybody recognize you when you're out and about? Yeah, it was actually kind of cool. So I walked from uh, I walked from CenturyLink to Roja, the Mexican spot downtown. And people were at like mowing coolies, like outside, like yelling. And people were driving by in cars because it was a nice day and everybody was out and cheering. So it was a good atmosphere. It was cool. It was fun. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys don't really, this year, have not allowed yourself to soak in your success because you've been so focused on the next thing. But I wonder, Saturday into Sunday, did you sit back and like kind of take it in at your champions? Yeah, we definitely did. It, especially, I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of like the, all the, the, the celebrations and all that stuff, but Saturday after the game was pretty cool, you know, just partaking in all the activities with cutting the net and and obviously with all the students, how, how jazzed up everybody was. It was just a good environment. It was a good time. So I'm glad I did it. I was I was going to sit on the bench the whole time and just kind of watch from afar, but I finally found Mac, and Mac just said, like, look at this. It's pretty cool, you know, and just soak it all in. And he's always saying, like, hey, enjoy it and uh, don't – don't just let this pass by without really watching, seeing it. And then I, I looked around, and it was, it was pretty cool. So it was, it was it was a fun opportunity and a cool experience. How do you been turn the page when you're like, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, You've been around Mac for longer than most guys on this team. He's up for a lot of Coach of the Year nominations, awards. What makes him such a deserving coach to be in that kind of talk? Yeah, he's just a – he's never – he doesn't get a big head. He doesn't – he always just stays humble as, as bad as I, I mean. Like like our guys, our guys do a good job of just kind of maintaining their their mentality, and they they don't get too big for the skin, honestly. And, and Mac, whatever he's up for, and whatever he wins, he's he's obviously deserving. He's been here, he's been doing it the right way, and I might be biased, but I think he's doing it the right way. And everybody else appreciates what he does on and off the court, and he just stays inside of himself and doesn't get too big, too big, and doesn't act too big for anybody. So I like that. I like his humble humbleness and humility. So it's it's fun. I got to get it, David. How do you get to the end of like a you know the road like that when it's such a long winning the conference title is such a long grind in the last months but then you don't get much time to kind of like let it stew. You kind of have to get ready for the Big East tournament and the NCAA tournament. Like, how do you find the right amount of time to appreciate what you've done while also not losing sight of what's still ahead? Honestly, just like you guys were asking if I if, if it's sunk in, I, no, it hasn't. No, like <laughs> I mean we got. We got bigger things. We got, like you said, another game, Big East tournament. It, it's kind of a new season, you know. The regular season's fun. We we took care of business. We did what we were supposed to do. Uh, but now we got to turn the page and go go on to the Big East tournament. And it's going to take a different focus level. Uh, we're going to have to stay locked in and keep doing what we've been doing. And then hopefully we can take care of business there and then just focus on the tournament. And then maybe like May 15th, you can hit me up, all call right. me, and we'll, and we'll have we'll have a talk. Cool. So it'll be good. You talked with Marcus at all a lot recently since, since Saturday. Uh, yeah, I've been talking to him, just staying with him and hoping he's all right, and then just you know keep your head up, keep perspective, and, and it'll be all good. How, How much does he mean to this team on both ends of the floor? How much does he mean? Much, yeah, on both ends of the floor. Uh, a lot, obviously. You see what he's been doing. Uh, as just a sophomore, I mean, he can, he can get to all three levels and score from all three levels and just get to his spots, and he does an unbelievable job of getting everybody involved and just keeping the pace of the game on the offensive and on the defensive end. He's, He's growing in that area, uh, especially with this talk and leadership on the defensive end. It's, it's it's fun to watch. It's fun to fun to watch his game grow on both ends, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. You and Tyshawn haven't spent a lot of minutes on the floor without Marcus. Will there be a big adjustment there? Um, if you have to do spend some time with that? Uh, yeah, it would be an adjustment period. Um, obviously, moving him to one a little bit, doing some stuff, or I don't know, maybe I end up with the one. But in our system, in our system, it's a it, we can. I mean, Marcus was, Marcus was a point guard, but we don't really have positions. So we just, we just have five basketball players that go out and do, do what they're supposed to do. So. Wait, wait, Christian will be your point guard? He played point guard in high school. He kind of is. Yeah, maybe he should be the guy. <laughs> you saw that handoff over here in, yeah. in Trafford? No, no. No, I think Christian Christian's doing well in his role right now. He's doing good at his position. But I don't know, honestly. Let me There's always you. a chance. Uh, you know, uh, you guys shoot so well at home. Was Madison Square Garden, different arena. I know, I know you shooters. You know, different arena, different environment. Sometimes it takes some adjustment. So you've been in MSG. So what's it like to adjust to the atmosphere there as a shooter? 
Uh, at the end of the day, man, I, I mean, it's just same court, same 94 feet, same rims, 10 feet. You know, there's not really much that goes into it. Uh, I mean, it's Madison Square Garden, but at the end of the day, we've been playing, we've been playing this game since we were seven years old. So it's not really an adjustment. It's more of like just kind of soak it in. Like you guys said, we're in Madison Square Garden. Just soak it in, take it in. But then when the ball goes up in the air, it's just another game. And, and we take care of business. And the adjustment, I mean, I don't think you shoot worse in places like that because of the adjustment. I don't think you shoot any better. I think the ball of averages play themselves out, and you're just going to shoot how you always do it. Does it take it for granted getting to play in, in Mecca? Definitely. Basketball. This is another question you should ask me, like May 15th, after my senior <laughs> year. Uh, I, uh, I just, I don't know, like, it's it's unbelievable, obviously, playing in Madison Square Garden, but I think I'll have a lot better comments to give you guys when I'm done and finished. And, and my mind's not really on game plans and scouting reports and all that and just winning games. So, let two years, ask, I got you. Let me ask you the flashback for a second. You, uh, you guys have played in Madison Square Garden twice. Yep. Hasn't gone well. Yep. Can you recall the feelings of what it, what it, what it's like to kind of have the anticipation of playing in a tournament setting like that, and then, you know, to kind of get a gut punch in overtime against Providence, you know, at the last second against Xavier. What, what is that? How does that sit? Yeah, I think I'd say it's just like all the games throughout the season. Um, like we talked about earlier in the year, we hit on last year. We we let some games slip. We lost three or four in a row, and I'd say our maturity has grown, and our level of focus and our level of just sticking to the game plan has grown and our guys are older and we, we understand it now and we can kind of we can kind of get that message to the rest of the guys. When I was a freshman and even last year, I was, I'm not in a position to where I can really, like I've been here, you know? Yeah. But now I've been here, I've done it, obviously 0-2 and we want to we get something going and, and, and win a tournament. I, rem I remember, like this is just kind of my own recollection, but I like recollection is like, that first year, you had a shot. Like, yeah. Yeah. Left, that, left wing, yeah. short. Yeah, you remember. Not that I remember it. <laughs> no, I know you I remember, remember, but I just remember the, the, the uh, <laughs> in every game hurts, but like that one was like, yeah, an opportunity to maybe keep yeah, going sure. and something. So. For sure, it happens. And, yeah. and, and even then, I would say, I mean, I was a freshman at that moment, and our team was, we, were, we had some different dynamics, you know. Yeah. Granted, that team, I mean, that team was a good team. Uh, my sophomore year, we were a good team. This year, we we're a good team. But there's different pieces every year. And we relied heavily on Marcus and Kyrie down the stretch. And when those guys were a little bit off, then the rest of us were a bit off. But now, we rely on the whole team. You know, there's eight of us that, that, that do what we're supposed to do and that can really carry the load at different times. So when you're not really relying on those two guys, then you can, you, you, the ball moves and and everybody just kind of falls into the game plan of what we're doing. So yeah. that team's a little different. Those guys were unbelievable. Uh, playing with them on both sides of the ball was fun. But this team is, we don't rely on two guys. We rely on seven or eight of us. So it's fun. It's just, just, different, just a different, different dynamic. Game. Yeah, different dynamic. And, and we make do with what we got. You know? Remember what shoes you were wearing? Uh, those blue ones. Remember the guy in the front row was wearing? <laughs> How much do you remember about that ball? <laughs> I remember, I remember a question that I got asked in the locker room, and yeah. TC was like, "Dude, get out of here!" But it was crazy. I was like, "Come on, man!" But it's just did I ask that question? You didn't ask okay. the question, but some some I guys asked me about KU. I remember, I remember and we were looking like, "You were there! You I were there! Was, you were there!" I was, but, yeah. No, nah, it was uh, just. Uh, hopefully, we don't repeat that. We don't have any questions. We ask we ask questions about uh, how we took care of business and all that. So, yeah. So, so with about the, KU. It, long story. We'll get off the re we'll get off the air. And we'll talk uh, about it. With Denzel, though, like obviously six men of the year. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. But like when you guys can put him at that five and play that small ball lineup, like what does that do to just maybe enhance, um, you know, the skill set of, of the group and make you guys super efficient? Yeah, it does. It does a lot. Um, because that the five he, he has to bring the five away from the rim and a lot of fives are unable to guard people going downhill and changing directions they just don't have that lateral quickness and Denzel can do that and when Denzel's shooting the ball I think I mean he, he hit like four or five threes last game didn't he when he's shooting the ball like that I mean we were at a high level and he's capable of doing that and he's been doing that and then at the same time he can up fake and go to the rim and shoot that 15 footer and get to the rim and be strong and then finish so it just adds another a different dynamic to our offense, you know. Uh, it's just a it's a tough piece to, to handle because when you're locked off on shooters in the corner, it opens up the whole lane and you're working one on one. So uh, having a guy that can do that, and now Dame's even Dame's doing that really well at, at a high level, and, and the efficiency goes up when you have a guy that 
it's hard to guard out out on the perimeter with a bigger guy. So it's it's he's unbelievable to have, and that's another question. When we didn't have him, I didn't realize how much we needed him until we got him. So. Have you, have you ever played a five out before this? Before he got eligible this year, and you guys started to toy with him a little bit. At Creighton, maybe with Martini, maybe with Martini, right? A little bit, bit. No. Teeny a little bit, but even Teeny, like Denzel's, like they're different. They're different yeah. players. You know, Teeny's playing above the rim and flip ups and downhill. He's 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 good, uh, but Denzel's just a little different. A little different player, so he adds a little bit to the to the mix. Um, five out. Uh, I mean, I played it with my AU team just oh, because we, didn't really have, we had five, five guards. We, my yeah. AU team was a lot like Creighton now. Like, really? Just move it. We didn't really rely on anybody. We just unselfishness wins. And that's what we've really done here. And that's what Max created here. And that's kind of what, what I saw and what I was foreshadowed when I was on my visit. That's how I wanted to play. And not, not really five out. I think it was like five, five out. Right. But, but I'll take it, you know. Uh, Denzel does an unbelievable job on the defensive end, so we can make up for it on the offense. I mean, it's not typically how teams have won Big East titles in the past, but it seems like you guys are. It's a brand, man. It's the Warriors brand, you know. The Warriors do it, uh, kind of. Not even they don't even do it with five out, but the the Rockets are trying to do it now, and they're on a four game skid. But before they were winning eight, so uh, it's just it's just hard to guard. You know, teams don't see it, and you obviously we give up something, uh, yeah. but you gain. Hopefully, we gain. We have more positives than negatives, and. And adding Denzel's, I think it's a positive. It's a really big positive. Mitch, heading so, so we'll heading, take it. Heading into the postseason, how is the mentality different this year than it was at this same point last year? Um, it was kind of do or die last year. Uh, I think we were on the bubble at this time. Uh, we had to win a couple games to get into the tournament. Obviously, we didn't do that. We played in the NIT. Um, but now it's like a do or die situation. Uh, or it's not a do or die situation. And, you know, we just keep playing with that freedom. When we're playing loose, I've said it before, when we're playing, when we're having fun and playing loose and playing with that freedom that Mac allows us to play with, uh, our, our level of basketball is at a very high level. And when we're doing that, we're capable of doing anything, no matter the five guys we have on the court. So, and it happened throughout the year. I think we were at Seton Hall. I mean, I told Mac, I had like a three minute break. And I was like, Mac, let those guys rock, man. They're playing well. And, but sometimes it's, Sometimes I might be out, sometimes I might be in, but it's just like we have that culture and we have that dynamic to where we can we just play. Five guys on the court, we just play. We just hoop and have fun doing it. So you it's good. You uh, mentioned what you kind of envisioned when you were coming here. Did you ever see yourself cutting down the nets at CHI <laughs> and the team, you know, setting a school, retiring school record, being ranked seventh in the AP? I definitely envisioned it. Uh, two years late, but better late than never, you know. <laughs> you got to get it when you can. Uh, but. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. Obviously, you want to win your freshman year, you want to win your sophomore year, you want to win it all four years. But uh, getting the first one, it's, it's fun, uh, but it just kind of makes you hungrier to, to win more. Uh, once you win and get that, get that feeling, you just want it, you just want more. So I think everybody else can attest to that and say the same thing, and we're just going to do whatever we can to, to cut more nets down. Appreciate you guys.